G'day Internet, welcome to another epic clock bench video. On the chopping block today, we've got the Intel Xeon E5520. Now this processor was launched 8 years ago in 2009. It comes with 4 cores and 8 threads with a base frequency of 2.26 GHz and a turbo of 2.53 and 8 meg cache now if you're into overclocking and you're looking for a bank for buck processor this has got to be the one either this processor the 5520 or the E5620 which was featured in one of my earlier videos you're most definitely not going to need to get the credit card out for this one because as you can see they can be had well you can buy a pair of them for three dollars ninety five on ebay at that price bang for buck yep this is the one folks not much else needs to be said really the motherboard we're going to be using today and also featured on a couple of other previous videos is my trusty good old gigabyte ud7 and what a specimen she is just look at that motherboard wow i don't make them like this anymore folks let's get this show on the road okay here we are in bios the usual control f1 to bring up advanced options load optimized defaults now yeah, the multi is 18 stick it on 18 and we'll enable the c states um down to bc okay set that straight to 200 memory on the lowest which is 6 LLC enabled vCore 1.15 that's very low folks yep that's right 1.15 DRAM to 1.6 which is stock let's go and do a bit of a tidy up set the default boot order quick boot enable and disable full screen logo AHCI enabled we'll just quickly go in and check the temps Okay, here we are, booted back up. No worries, just fast forward this a little bit. And here we are, back in Windows. Open up the usual array of programs, real temp, uh, hardware monitor, and CPU Z. Uh, temps look pretty good. Um, you can see it turboing to 3.8 gigahertz. If all four cores are active, it will it will cap at 3.6 gigahertz. But if the if um, all all four cores aren't loaded, it will turbo to 3.8 gigahertz. As you can see in hardware hardware monitor there. Give Prime 95 a run. And check out temperatures. Look at the temperatures, folks. Very low temps. So it went from the base clock frequency of 2.26 gigahertz to 3.6 gigahertz on all cores. So that's four cores and four threads at 3.6 gigahertz. Open up CPU Z and check our voltages. Now remember we set it to 1.15 in the BIOS. Yeah, with a little bit of V-droop, 1.136 volts at 3.6 gigahertz and uh, two core, one or two cores at turbo to 3.8 gigahertz bang for buck look at that folks you can't beat that temperatures are barely even breaching 60 degrees we'll let that run for a good 10 10 to 15 minutes or so and then uh, I'll probably move on to, on to some gaming and see how it handles some gaming I'm tipping it's going to be very good you see the base frequency there, 2.27. All cores are at 100%, including the, the HT threads. The only problem is with these older 1366 platforms is the motherboard. Um, 
they can tend to be quite high and, and demand a premium price tag, which is unfortunate. I mean, I think that this the Soccer 1366 motherboard is the last motherboard to actually support Xeon overclocking. I could be wrong, but you know, I think it's the last the last platform. And we can see why, because people just buy the cheap Xeons and overclock the buggery out of them. Anyway, guys, this has been fantastic fun. Hope you've enjoyed the video, and um, I'll see you in the next one.